So where are you in this list? You're probably already thinking it a little bit anyway because Jesus begins his sermon by making a list. Happy are you. And then he flips the page. How terrible for you. And so that sounds like we're somewhere on this list. How we hear this list probably depends on how we see ourselves. How we find ourselves coming into this space on this particular morning, it probably depends on how we see our neighbors, how we see our community, how we see our school, how we see creation. How we hear this list, as it sounds like a list, probably depends on how we envision the kingdom of God. Jesus begins by talking to the disciples, which means he's talking to you and me, and he offers up statements about happiness, which Lutherans don't really use the word happy, so it's kind of a weird translation, I know. A little bit of an aside, Luke loves the word joy and rejoicing. Of the four Gospels, he's the one who is quite ebullient and loving the idea that Jesus is at work in this world here and now in our lives, and we should be joyful. And so some translators, like this particular one, goes with the word happy. It's also kind of weird and it sounds awkward. We probably prefer blessed because your translation at home would say that. But we have those. And then Jesus, because this is a sermon, or at least in my Bible, the subheading says he's, this is a sermon on the plane. It's almost like he takes the sermon, flips the page over, and then he says, how terrible for you. So where are you on this list? How do you find yourself? How do you identify yourself? And how do you identify your neighbors? How do we see each other through this lens, through this, this, these descriptors that we've been given by Jesus? In the Gospel of Luke, Jesus is very much of the earth. He's very much of our lives. So it's kind of like he's standing in our midst. He knows our daily lives. And so he uses our language, our terminology, and the way we walk in the world. And, and the way that we walk in the world, or at least our culture here walks in the world, is very much like a binary. Black, white, poor, rich, sad, joyful, dejected, beloved. We live in this world where we presume that that's how the world works. That if there are rich, well then there must be poor. And if there are poor, well then inevitably there's going to be rich folks as well. And we have this perception, because we live in this world and this is how we function, and maybe this is how we think, that, speaking of that first line, happy are you who are poor, or how terrible for you who are rich, that if there are rich people, well then there must be people who struggle with economic despair economic distress. And if there are people who have enough and maybe have more than enough, well then inevitably there must be people that just must be the way the world works. Jesus is naming how we walk in the world. He's naming how we see each other, how we see this world. So we go back to that question, where do we see ourselves on this list? Or maybe we should ask ourselves, where do we see our neighbors on this list? One of the challenges, and there's a lot of challenges whenever we're hanging out with Jesus, he, he kind of pushes on us a lot. But one of the challenges we encounter with this list, and especially if we, if we find ourselves on the back page of the sermon, it sounds a little bit, living in a binary world like we do, it sounds a little bit like Jesus is telling us that he's going to come into our house and he's going to grab some gold out of our portfolio and he's going to arbitrarily give it to other people. Or he's going to come into our kitchen and he's going to grab all of our favorite snacks, he's going to bag them up and he's going to give them to the neighbor. And when we hear it like that, we begin to bristle. We get a little upset, we get a little on edge because we live in a world of binaries. If there are people who are rich, well then there must be people who are poor. If there's people who are joyful, well then there must be people who are sad. If there's people who are full, then there must be people who hunger. It's just the way the world works. This is the way our world works. Jesus is entering into our world and standing amongst us and naming what we already know. At the same time, Luke tells us in verse 20, Jesus raised his eyes to his disciples. So yes, this is a sermon, it's for the whole world, it's for all of creation, and there were a lot of people who were gathered around him in that valley where he was preaching here in chapter six, but he's actually talking primarily to us, to you and to me. And you and me, even though we live in this binary world just like everybody else, and we, we understand black and white, right and wrong, poor and rich, hunger and being full, even though we dwell in that and may find ourselves in that, in that reality ourselves, we also know about God's kingdom. We also know about grace. We also know about forgiveness. 
We know about justice. We know about love. So in a sense, yes, Jesus is naming what we know, and Jesus is naming where we exist, or maybe where our neighbors exist, or where we see each other, where we see our neighbors. And all the ways that we use these binaries to bind ourselves up and to separate ourselves from each other. We have so many different ways where we can, where we can use black and white, right and wrong, poor and rich, or choose your own descriptors as ways to separate ourselves out, to, to keep other people away, to identify and apply labels so that we ourselves know what we're doing. But we're disciples. We've been called by God. We've been blessed by God. We have been washed in these waters. We are fed at this table. We know about God's kingdom. We know something different. It's not that we're being pulled out of this world in some bizarre sort of multiverse sense, but really we are of this world, but we are being set apart. We have been marked by the cross of Christ. So when Jesus speaks to us and names our reality and names what we know in this world and the binaries in which we exist and in which we are bound, at the same time he is reminding us and this is where he kind of melts our brains a little bit, but he's also reminding us that at the exact same time, these binaries do not exist. Because we're in God's kingdom. We're part of God's kingdom. We're part of God's work in this world. So yes, we recognize this, we see this, we experience this in our lives, we experience this in the lives of our neighbors, but we also know that our neighbors, we know that we are more than poverty, hunger, sadness, dejection, we know that our neighbors are more than poverty, hunger, sadness, dejection. We know our neighbors are people of God, just like us. We know that God loves and that God is at work in this world right now. This is an odd text, I will admit, to hear on this particular weekend. We come here on this particular weekend. We gather in this space or spaces like this. And we come here to remember our saints, our dearly beloved, those who have died in the last year, those who have died 20 years ago, but we still carry their thoughts and their memories with us because they are our beloved. So we gather in this space with our sadness, with our pain, with our disappointment, maybe our anger. We gather here because we still feel physically distant from our saints as we long for them to be near. And so we light candles and we offer prayers and on this particular weekend, maybe we hear stories like this and sermons like this because we are people of God. We are disciples. We gather here, or maybe I should say God got us here, sometimes dragging us, kicking and screaming. But we are brought into God's presence again to remember that God's kingdom is at work and that Christ has destroyed death, on the gra death in the grave so that there is no separation between us and us and God, which means there is no separation between our dearly beloved and God. Death has no claim, so part of our gathering in this space is to give thanks that we dwell in the kingdom of God that's breaking into this world here and now so that we can be surrounded by our saints. Scripture tells us that our saints sing with us, that our saints pray alongside of us, that when we share in this meal, it is a sacrament that has no end. So when we gather at this table, Christ feeds us as Christ is feeding our saints. We have a vision of the kingdom that is far beyond the binaries of this world and the limits that we place upon ourselves. We gather in this space so that God can remind us again, so Jesus can speak directly to us again and remind us that we are loved by grace and that we are loved through forgiveness. We are loved through the cross that we are not separated from God and that we are not separated from each other. Jesus is setting us free from everything that binds us up. Jesus is breaking loose everything that keeps us from our neighbors. Jesus is applying to us a promise of good news that nothing will separate us from the love of God, not even these binaries and ways that we see our world and see our neighbors and maybe see ourselves. Every one of these descriptors that Jesus uses, as he uses them, he knows they fall short. They're words that we use. And he uses them to overcome every barrier and obstacle that we create. Every descriptor falls short. Every assumption falls short. Everything we know about our neighbors and we create to know and, and hold fast to, it all rings hollow and false at the foot of the cross. In the presence of God, we are beloved. We have been claimed. 
we are set free. Not even death can reach us. And this gift that Jesus gives to us as God's people in this space, God's kingdom breaking through this space, this gift is flowing through you. It's why Jesus raises his eyes to the disciples. Because you and I know, we know forgiveness, we know grace, we know the promise of everlasting life and that it's not something that we have to wait for when we die, but it washes through us and over us every moment with every breath. Every time we wash our hands, we can remember baptism. Every time we gather at this table, we are being fed and nourished again. All other words fall short through Christ. We see an opportunity to proclaim that God's kingdom, God's justice, God's equity, God's promise for God's people. It is coming to bear on our world right now. And it's coming to bear on our world through you. Amen.